Good evening. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the 12th Sunday in order, Ordinary Time, and happy Father's Day weekend. We are united today both in person and with our online family. Tonight's Mass intention is for the 50th wedding anniversary of Jeff and Carol Clemens. Today's Mass is being live streamed. For our online assembly, you can find the song sheet for today's liturgy in our worship guide on the resources page on our website. From at home, you can sing aloud. For those of us here present, we are asked to refrain from singing per diocesan and CDC guidelines. Beginning Sunday, July 5th, we are adding an 11.30 a.m. mass to our Sunday schedule. There are volunteers that are needed, so please contact Lisa in the office if you are able to help. Father Daniel will be praying for our high school seniors with a special mass Monday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. Our entire parish family is invited to attend. Reservations are required and the mass will be live streamed on Facebook. Again, a gentle reminder for those of us here present today, we must maintain social distancing. That's three seats between each group or individual and we must cover our nose and mouth with our masks. Reservations are required for Mass. New dates are added each Wednesday for the upcoming week, and Masses will be continued to be live streamed on our Facebook page. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate Happy Father's Day. And to the very special way, I would like to congratulate Jeff and Carol uh, Clemens for their 50th wedding anniversary. Dear friends, today as we are gathered here, we thank God for the gift of life and for the gift of love. As he always comes to us in a very different way, let us also continue to pray for those people who are struggling in their lives, especially for those who are sick. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I heard the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are now on watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we will prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me. Like a mighty champion, my persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who trust the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For you too, I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, Lord in, your in your great, great love, love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult and shame. For your sake, I bear insult and shame covers my face. I've become an outcast to my brothers a stranger to my children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for the bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, Turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revere. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the one man's sin entered through one man's sin, entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all man inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Through sin, though sin is not accounted when there is no law, but death reigned from Adam to Moses, then over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam. For who is the t after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come? But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God, the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we proclaim the good news. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the mountaintops. And do not be afraid of those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. And are not two sparrows sold for just a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I haven't been here uh, on Sundays here for quite a while, mostly because um, I celebrate Sunday liturgy with Father Joe Clark as he celebrates uh, Mass in his, in his home where he lives. Um, so it's nice to be back here again in the worship space. It's a little different than the last time I was here. A whole lot different. But we're here celebrating. And today on this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, it's the first Sunday in quite a while where we've not celebrated a special feast day on this Sunday. The scriptures today are not very ordinary. They are challenging, but give us hope. They call us to preach Christ through our words and our lives without fear. The first reading tells us how the prophet Jeremiah trusted in the power of God while he faced opposition for his prophetic ministry. The psalmist in first res the responsorial psalm displays the same trust in the kindness and great mercy of God when he is misunderstood and ill-treated even by his brothers and relatives. The second reading, Paul assures the Christians in Rome that they need not be afraid of opposition because they share in the death of Jesus and in his resurrection and because they are united with Christ the new Adam, in his resurrection. Today's gospel passage is taken from the end of Jesus' instructions to the twelve apostles as he sends them forth in pairs to prepare the people for his own coming, giving them a share in his own powers of miraculous healing. He instructs them to live simply and to expect opposition and rejection. After having predicted future opposition and persecution, Jesus encourages his disciples to stand firm. Three times they are urged, do not fear, do not be afraid. Instead of shrinking from the task, they are to proclaim the gospel boldly because they will be protected, just as Jeremiah was assured of God's protection. Thus. Jesus commands his disciples not to fear their persecutors. He presents before them the image of the sparrow 
to reinforce the disciples' trust and hope in God. The readings hint at the opposition the apostles themselves would meet, and that as we, as Christians today, will encounter as we carry on the work of Jesus in the world. The readings encourage us to persevere in doing the work of Jesus. They assure us that we will be successful despite the opposition we encounter. St. Teresa of Avila is a, famous, as, as, is a famous theologian, reformer of the Carmelite order, off order and spiritual advisor to the great Spanish mystic, St. John of the Cross. But Teresa's ministry was not well received in her community. Her sisters had grown lax in faith and practice, and when she called for reform, their response was to throw her out of the convents, the very convents that she herself had established. On one occasion, she was turned out in the middle of the night in the middle of a rainstorm. Dressed only in her coarse wool habit, she climbed into a donkey cart and was riding along when the wheel of the cart hit a ditch and the cart turned over, dumping Teresa into the mud. She sat there, mud-soaked wool, looked up to heaven and said, Lord, if this is the way you treat your friends, it's no wonder that you don't have many. But frustrated as she was, Teresa clung to God. In one of her meditations on the disciplines of the Holy Spirit, Teresa talks about he was, we must not be deceived by the appearance that evil triumphs over good. She writes, God uses the devil as a sharpening stone for Christians. Teresa not only taught this lesson, she lived by it. She never gave up on God, even when her sisters opposed her by going to priests and bishops to make trouble for her. She kept right on teaching what she knew to be the truth, and eventually she won out. Her desire was to be faithful and find and to be faithful, and God prospered her for her efforts. Today she's known as a doctor of the church, an exemplary teacher and thinker while the nuns who treated her so badly remain dead and unknown. And the Carmelite convents of Teresa's reform continue this very day. Teresa understood what the prophet Jeremiah was saying about God in that first reading, and that was Jesus was teaching in today's gospel lesson. Do not fear, for God always has your back. COVID-19 or not, Today, my dear friends, we celebrate, or at least today's the vigil of the celebration of Father's Day. We remember all those men who together with our mothers have brought us into life. Together with our mothers, they raised us in homes in what we now refer to as the domestic church. They provided guidance, discipline, and most importantly, love. They protected our family. And we're at a family here at Ascension, our spiritual home. We also have a father who looks after and loves us, our father in heaven and our father here, Father Daniel. You too should be honored on this day, Father. We say thank you for your leadership. Here's a short story about fatherhood. The story is told by a man named Bob Stumps who was bald, as a cue ball bald, about what his children did one night. He and his wife decided to go out for dinner, so they hired a babysitter to take care of the two small children. While they were gone, the babysitter got interested in a television program and wasn't watching the children very carefully. Their little boy, Peter, got into his father's electric shaver and shaved a big landing strip right down the middle of his head. When Bob came home, he was furious. He said, Peter, I told you never to play with my shaver. Now you're gonna get a spanking that you'll never forget. 
He was just about to administer the spanking when Peter looked up to him and said, wait till you see my sister. Bob said that he and his wife were horrified when they went into the next room and saw their little four-year-old girl with all of her hair shaved off. She looked like a little skinned rabbit. By this time, Bob was really furious. He grabbed Peter and said, boy, are you now going to get it? Just as he lifted his hand and started to bring it down, Peter looked at him with tears in his eyes and said, but daddy, we were just trying to look like you. Needless to say, Peter never did get a spanking that night. Instead, he got an explanation and a hug. And so, my dear friends, we all influence other people's lives all the time. Our families, our co-workers, our fellow parishioners. Are you the Christian role model that you are called to be? Amen. Please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontio Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the, and the life of the world to come. Amen. God knows our supplications before we voice them. Let us be mindful now of our asking to our Lord. For our nation, we ask your powerful healing and protection and that your counsel and that you counsel those in authority who discharge their duties with honesty and justice for all. We pray to the Lord. For medical personnel, first responders, and our military members, as they continue to serve us in these challenging times, we ask that you bless and protect them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need or despair, especially during this pandemic, may you, O Lord, hear their cries. May they not lose hope, but turn to you, the source of all strength and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers, stepfathers, those who are like fathers to others, with the blessing of St. Joseph, may they bring love, nurturing, and kindness to their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by the coronavirus and all who are sick, we pray for healing and recovery, especially Marianne DeLuca, Joe Monahan, and Maureen Humphreys. For those names in our bulletin and for the names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, we ask that you welcome them into your eternal kingdom, 
especially David Nelson, Daniel Fahey, Joseph Hendricks, father of Ellen Anasiata, Reggie Josephs, mother of Ethan Joseph, and our weekend mass intentions for all the deceased fathers in the parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. In God's great love, we ask for our prayers to be answered. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear parishioners, this is usually the time when the collection basket is passed around, but that is not possible with the current situation. For those present after Mass, the collection baskets will be located at the center door of the sanctuary. For those watching online, there is a link in the posted psalm sheet in the comment section below for your use. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of consideration and praise and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true and right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clay.
are indeed the holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to that who have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Mary our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O oh, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil, gracious, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of Deacon Tom, I would like just to remind you, when you come to receive the Holy Communion, the first thing, make sure you put these hands so that we can drop the Holy Communion to you without touching your hands. And then you step out, and then when you Come on those yellow side, stand there, open the mask, and then you consume, and then put again the mask, and then you go to your seat. Thank you.
not refuse the death which brings you life. For as the grain in the earth must die for be seated. On your, if you're out of town, stand up and say hi. Come on. Names are you, please. Yes, I am. You get lots of gold gifts for your mom and dad? Yes. Uh -huh. Well. Surprise, yeah, right, okay. Well, good, glad to have you with us. Take care, wonderful. Anybody else? Oh. There you go. Hi, how are you? What's your name, ma'am? Heather? Okay, Heather, and, and who's that next to you? Oh, we don't know. <laughs> okay, where are you from, Heather? North Alabama. And where are you living now? North Suffolk. Okay. <laughs> well, glad to have you with us, dear. Come back and visit us again. Good. My wife is from lower Alabama. L.A. We call it L.A. She's from Pensacola, Florida. That's an in-joke, in-joke. Um, dads, it's your day tomorrow. You don't have to cook or anything, I hope. Would you please stand, and we're going to get a blessing from our other father. Let us pray. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless this man. They may be strengthened as Christian fathers, let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Congratulations. Thank you. We have one more blessing. Would the golden couple please come forward, Carol, Jeff? Please come forward, please. You're going to get to come up and stand up in here, too. 
Is that right? We're going to have them here. You can see them. Okay. No, you want to pace, Father. Please, can you put your right hand for the blessing? Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of Jeff and Carol so that they, may, they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today amid the joys and struggles of their life. You have preserved the union between them, renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that surrounded by their children, grandchildren, and friends of this wonderful community, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> you may now kiss the bride. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Please stand now. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious of blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Deacon Tom, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today and celebrate this Mass as we are preparing for this weekend to celebrate Father's Day. And for those who are watching with live stream Mass, I want to also to say thank you for your prayers and for your participation. Let us continue to go with one message, that God loves you. And let us continue to love one another as he loves us. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration is ending. We go now to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks to be to God. God.